Good morning, good morning. Thank you so much for being here today. Uh, you are here now for the session called Building a Workforce Pipeline in Innovation Technology. And I, I'm very happy here to introduce, we have a very special guest. She is a Detroit native. She is a seasoned growth-minded leader who has built a successful career across corporate and government sectors. And she has recently led the highest performing site in the United States for the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Businesses Initiative at Wayne State University. Her name is Camille Walker Banks, and she is now leading the expansion of NPower to the Detroit Southeast Michigan market at an ideal time as the demand for talent <laughs> and lack of supply creates a real opportunity for the Detroit region's young adults. Camille has implemented key state and local initiatives around economic development and community revitalization, resulting in over $5.5 billion in new capital investment and over 5,000 new jobs created during her tenure with the MEDC in underserved communities. Camille's 20-year career has a strong foundation in business growth and development, process improvement, and capital access that spans across industries, including technology, service, manufacturing, and philanthropy. Her ability to build consensus, consensus among various groups and interests, develop leaders and strong teams, and manage client relationships are her strengths. With that, I ask that you please give, your, give Camille your full attention, and please help me in welcoming her to the webcasting platform. Thank you so much, Janice, for the introduction. Um, and, and as for 20 years, I started as a, as a kid, so okay, we can't put a boom. But, um, but thank you for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure and an honor to present um, yet another new resource that we have um, that entered our market, um, and it's called Empower. We are facing unprecedented times in our country. Um, and our new normal, um, it, which is partly why we're, we're having this, this conference, our new normal is going to rely heavily on tech, on technology. And without a viable pipeline of, of work-ready, IT-trained talent, Southeastern Michigan companies and communities will not be able to participate in the global tech revolution that will come out of this crisis. So Empower is here with a solution to ensure that both our young adults, 18 to 25 year olds, 30% of our population is engaged and that our communities, the businesses in our communities, both small businesses and large businesses, because in, um, in my purview, I consider all companies an IT company in some sort, and especially as we move into this new normal, IT is gonna be even more important. As Jan has mentioned in my intro, um, I've, I've um, been a long time business, small business advocate, connector, um, and workforce development advocate, but mostly I work to advocate on behalf of small businesses. At the time that I started running the Goldman Sachs program, small businesses and resources weren't available for them. There were a lot of resources for larger companies, but for the smaller and mid-sized companies, not very much. And so the advocacy part of me decided to move into that role and to create um, a community that supports small businesses. Now no one is isolated and alone. Similar exactly what the MMSDC is doing, where they're bringing these thought leaders together to work through problems. So now that we have that in order, um, when I started running that Goldman program, I remember the feedback I would get from our alum who were we're scaling, I mean, 350% growth, huge growth. But everyone's largest challenge, because we would ask that, in the beginning it was access to funding. Then it turned into talent, and finding the right talent. And so when Empower decided to come into this market in the fall of 2019, with the, uh, thanks to the generosity of, of Robert Smith, the billionaire who paid off all the, um, the Morehouse student loan debt. But he put the money up to expand Empower, that is a national organization, to Southeast Michigan because of the, um, the need to really cre recreate our middle class. And so that's partly, you know, part of my mission is, yeah, we're moving people from 
poverty into middle class through tech, tech training and placement, but we're also in this space because this is a, vi a viable pipeline that will take our community, Southeastern Michigan and communities across the country to another level. So who we are, as I mentioned, we're a national nonprofit. Um, we are a link between non-traditional job seekers and employers. So the students that I'm looking for are, um, you know, as I mentioned, 18 to 25. Some have, uh, have gone to college before, uh, for whatever reason they weren't able to sustain it. I have a few college graduates who, are, who were in um, um, programs that aren't necessarily, either they're not relevant to what are the skill sets that we need to grow, or they're no longer interested in that, in that skill set. So now we have an opportunity to retrain our students. Um, the mission um, is, is listed and it mentions military veterans and young adults from underserved, and I like to call the underestimated communities. But I really, because I know that this audience is national in nature, I really wanna highlight the various locations that we have around the country. And I wanted to, to tell you that this is a viable tech pipeline of, of, of people for you. These individuals will come with credentials and they come with a support system that is national in nature. So those barriers or obstacles that were preventing them from entering tech careers are no longer there. We're helping to, to um, make sure that those barriers get relieved. That won't become your problem. But I, I show this because um, I know that you're all over the country. I wanna point out that our New Jersey site, New York, Texas and California serve the veteran um, military, veteran, um, military veterans. Michigan doesn't yet, but I'm working on it. We just launched in January, so give us a minute. I have 23 students who have gone through the program so far. And what we do is provide free um, training. Now we started in person and there is a series of labs and trainings um, and professional development opportunities. Um, but the goal is for our students to receive CompTIA nationally recognized IT credentials. Once our students are placed in their paid internships, this is a 23 week program, technical program, professional development on Fridays, followed by a seven week paid internship so that our students have an opportunity to try some of their skills and to gain some experiences. The ultimate goal, however, is to place them into full-time employees. Once they become full-time employees, and now they're, um, they're, they're, they're um, understanding what it's like to work in a physical corporate environment, we offer additional trainings in cybersecurity, coding, cloud, um, enterprise service management, for those who want to specialize. And this is all, yeah, it's free for our students, but the, it's the generosity of, of Mr. Smith and other donors and other uh, foundations who uh, allow us to provide this program to our 18 to 25 year old opportunity youth free of charge. So no student debt and they get these relevant skills. So this was us in January when we started so this is our pre-COVID, and then as we transition online, what was beautiful about the transition, however, is that our students had a chance to, um, to really participate in some technical labs. They took computers apart, put them back together, plug it in, does it work? If it doesn't, we take it apart and we do it again. But then we were able to transition online, and that digital divide that they talk about is real. But we were able to equip our students with um, equipment, laptops, Wi-Fi hotspots, everything that they needed in order to move forward with their, with their journey in learning. So I just wanted to share this graphic because I'm very proud of the, the competencies that these students have now understanding the discipline that's required to work remotely. So some key outcomes, 80% of our students are placed in full-time jobs within one year of graduating our program. The average salary of our students coming in is $7,400. I mean, they're waiters, they're waitresses, they're um, warehouse clerks, they're sales cashiers, 
um, Uber drivers, but a year removed. And actually that $37,000 um, annual salary has increased dramatically. But 37,000 is a nice pay increase in a year for a young person. 80% of our students that enroll complete because we do um, wrap a lot of resources around our students and including the empowerment piece, getting them ready to pursue these opportunities. I also um, listed a couple of entry level positions that our students have excelled in. Again, they receive these nationally recognized um, IT fundamental certifications and A plus certification, certifications. And so then they're ready to enter into the market. Now, what I really wanted to share with you is this concept of a lifeboat job. This is a report that Burning Glass completed. And it was the first account of what is truly going on in workforce right now in this pandemic situation. And, and, it's, and it's based, it almost mirrors what took place in the economic downturn that we experienced back in 20, when was that, 2009 to goodness, 20, 2008 through 2012, where um, a lot of changes, there, were, there was a lot of unemployment, but we're, and that is the case now. But what I've learned and what I've seen, and now this report backs it up, is that a lot of those that are 18 to 25 in this age bracket that I'm working with are in, they're employed. A lot of them are employed, but they're in these low wage positions. They call them lifeboat jobs. Now we're not mad at the lifeboat job because these are the positions, this list are the positions that will carry us through the pandemic. So when we talk about getting Americans back to work during a pandemic, these are the positions that are going to sustain us through our, this next economic recovery we're gonna experience. In the first place, the jobs, the jobs um, cannot require a lot of reskilling. So let's say most of my students are in, right currently when they were first starting working with us, were stock clerks and, and as I mentioned, cashiers in that upper area. And you'll see that the pathway, when the lifeboat job ends and now we're recovered, they are able to take those skills that they've acquired and transition into better sustainable permanent positions. But I, what I want to show you though is the wage rate. When we look at that last category of next step occupations, the wage rates aren't as high for those that are in the lifeboat stock clerk positions right now in warehouse workers. But when they come out of this, there will be an opportunity for them to take those skills and take them into other positions. What excited me about this is where our students are in the computer network support specialist positions. They start much, much higher. They're much higher paid. But when they're ready to step out of that lifeboat into permanent jobs, into that next step occupation, information security analysts, database administrators, the wage rates are significantly higher. And what that means in our community is that our young people are able to stay and sustain themselves, make a good living, contribute to our communities, help to grow our communities, buy homes, patronize our businesses. Now they're actively engaged in our economy. And that is truly what our goal is. Post, and, and, and what this does, the real question, however, is this temporary relief of the life of the life uh, boat job? What does that mean for your company? What kind of um, competencies are you going to require as we transition out of this old normal into a new normal that is going to be tech focused? What does that mean to you? What does all this mean? Well, before I even get into that, because well, let me answer that. What it ultimately means is that now you're able to scale. I had listened to Dave Nelson's presentation prior to this, and he talked about opportunities, innovations that are taking place in markets all over the country. But if you're not able to engage and innovate, how are you going to grow? Where are you gonna be in five years? I wanted to um, share just a snippet, just, just to give you a sense of what um, the in-power curriculum looks like and what our students are learning. And, um, and guess what, guys? These young people from these underserved or 
un underestimated communities can read. Yeah. So we talk about, you know, all the, the school systems failed us. That is, it is what it is. This is the curriculum that is carrying our students into higher wage positions that are gonna carry them and carry our communities to the future. We went through 20, our students went through 23, it turned out to be 25 weeks because we took a hiatus to transition online, but they went through 23 weeks of technical training. They have um, developed resources and networks from all over the country. They have been um, involved in interviews, mock interviews, but now we're at the point where they're ready to enter their seven week it paid internships, but everything is still locked down. So we've developed, I, although I have a few students who will be placed at Microsoft, a few students who will be placed within um, Little Caesars IT department, Accenture and others, I wanna make sure that you small business owners are aware of this resource and of this talent pipeline. I want to eliminate this notion that, yeah, I can scale my business, and yes, these opportunities are coming my way, but I don't have the talent. We're not going to say that anymore in Southeast Michigan. And this is why. And these, and you know, this is a quick rescale. We engage corporate partners. And so what I what I ask of you is consider engaging with Empower. We're going to be um, training 50 more students. We trained our first class with 25, and, and so they're well on their way. They're, they're in the midst now of getting their internships solidified and full-time positions solidified, and we're helping them land those opportunities. But a number of corporate partners were able to come into our virtual classroom and really had an opportunity to engage with our students in different capacities. We had site visits, we had guest lecturers, we had those who went into smaller breakout rooms with small groups of our students to talk about, certain, to, to um, convey or, or to, um, to do these tech challenges. Now I'm still learning the tech language myself, but our partners are fully aware of what, of what this terminology, this new terminology is. But what I afforded them, the CIO of Wayne State University, the, you know, the, the head of the IT help desk department within Cisco. They have first crack at the best of our students. They had an opportunity through this engagement to learn the, the nature of what their needs are and learn what our students can do. And then we're able to develop relationships with those that they thought may be a best fit for their businesses. And I offer that to you as well as my other colleagues around the country. Um, you know, without a viable, let's say I have some notes here. Oh, I have in caps, profitability and scalability. And that's what I'm about. And that's what I'm talking about, guys. So this is my last slide. Just want to introduce you to this resource, to Empower. Um, I'm in the process now of creating or rewriting the standards for an IT generalist apprenticeship program in the state of Michigan. So that's coming. Cybersecurity um, will be prevalent in our curriculum with our graduates who will be coming back. And that's the, the class that we're probably going to start with. But again, life after COVID means more IT opportunities. And I'm offering a viable ready, work ready, IT trained talent pipeline for you because I want you to be scalable and profitable. I also want to mention to you that um, I just want to remind you to access your local workforce development agencies in Southeastern Michigan. That's um, pretty much the DESC, Detroit Employment Solutions, and SEMCA you know, for those outside of Detroit. And then there are other workforce development agencies in the various counties. But I heard a little birdie told me that there may be some on the job training money that is coming through. And if you were to take me up on this, this challenge of hiring our local opportunity youth, trained youth to come and help you 
to scale up in our new normal with your IT, they have resources or on-the-job training resources may be able to subsidize um, for a negotiated period of time their salaries. While they're in their, um, in their paid internships, they would be on my payroll, giving you an opportunity to try them out. And if you don't like, if, you, if they're not a fit, it's okay. Seven weeks and they're out. But if you love them, you could bring them on full time. They're, they're ready. I've already covered their training. It's paid for. And you have a whole ready to go, ambitious, hungry, young person who is ready to be molded to fit your needs. So please reach out to me and let's talk more. Janice? Thank you so much, Camille. I really, really appreciate it. We do have a couple of questions. Um, one of them is, how does somebody get involved so they can participate in the program? Take my information, right? My email address is right here. I would give you my office number, but I'm working from home. But I will give you my cell number. Call me. It's okay. 248-565. 7017 or email me and I need you. I need the community and you need us. So let's make this a win-win. What's another question, Janice? One more question. Uh, you gave a lot of good information and they would like to be able to have these slides available. So is there a way that these slides can be made available to the attendees? Absolutely. How would I do that, Janice? Should I send them to you? That would be great. And we'll make sure it gets out to the right people. Awesome. Or, and, and, or email me. I'll send you my presentation. It's okay. Absolutely. And that about concludes our session at this time. Camille, thank you so much. I really appreciate your participation. Always my pleasure. Um, and for everybody else, thank you so much for attending. What we're encouraging you to do at this time is please go to the Innovation Summit homepage and click on the next session for our programming break and a special message from our CEO and President Michelle Sori Robinson. In the meantime, we look forward to seeing everybody in the next room. Thank you. Thank Take you care, so everyone.